Everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. So we're continuing our discussion on Spider-Man and we're looking forward to Spider-Man 2. And I think there are a few things that I really want to highlight because when I played Spider-Man Miles Morales, it was quite interesting to see how the character and the story arc was really, in my opinion, uh, sped through. Now, yes, this was a very short game, so I guess there probably wasn't enough time for them to be able to do a lot more like tell his story in a fully fledged way. But at the end of the day, I think they did something that was quite unique. So if you think about it, Miles has already been in the games, you know, he'd already been in the first Spider-Man game 2018. And if you've never played these games, I don't want to really spoil them for you. But spoiler alert, I would say just turn this video off if you don't want any spoilers. I think that's the best way we can progress forward. And so he already had time to kind of go through a lot of things. You know, he's a young kid. He already likes and is a big fan of Spider-Man. But then he has a huge internal conflict. The internal conflict that he has is that he loses his father. And so just like Peter Parker, who loses Uncle Ben as well, which is something that, you know, Uncle Ben was very close to him, had been like a father to him. I think that also parallels Miles. So whoever was writing Miles Morales' story in terms of this game, maybe or this game series, maybe they wanted to parallel Peter with Miles. But I also think that Peter had enough time to also deal with other external conflicts that helped him to grow in terms of how the character was, you know, eventually developed and all of that before they had him come to dealing with other internal conflicts. And that's how you write a character. You let the character deal with problems within and problems outside, if you get what I mean. I just feel like Miles himself never really had too many problems outside, but had a whole lot of problems on the inside. Not only does he lose his dad, he also finds out that the Prowler is related to him and the Tinkerer, uh, the villain, I think that's the villain's name. It's I can't really remember. It's been such a long time. Oh, my gosh, uh, is also a very, very close uh, you know, person to him. So all of these to me just felt like, man, this is a whole lot that was dropped on this one young character so early. Now I get it, you know, maybe that's exactly what they kind of wanted it to be. But, you know, I guess again, because it's such a short game, it really missed the opportunity to kind of get the character to develop or, you know, to be able to allow for those other external issues to hit the character so that the character could grow and in a sense, you know, prove themselves as Spider-Man. But nonetheless, they were still able to do a good job by kind of tying the story together. And I just feel like if they really, really want to allow for the next Spider-Man game to really flourish, they really need to emphasize more of the external conflict. And I'll say the reason why. So both Peter and Miles have dealt with a lot of internal conflict. I mean, the end of the first Spider-Man 2018, we all know that another person close to Peter, you know, basically passed away. And also the bad guy, the main boss is also somebody that was close to Peter, basically Doc Ock. So both characters have already basically, you know, grieved and, uh, you know, felt sadness and felt grief in different ways. Now it's time for them to come to the point where they feel like they're already strong enough and have recovered from all of that, you know, grief and all those issues to be able to actually be superheroes. And this is their external conflict. So the choice of villains really needs to highlight this. So it really needs to highlight the part where they may be overpowered. They may be, you know, dealing with the villain or dealing with the past villain that actually takes their presence personal and is trying to, in a sense, overpower them. And then they can both overcome in terms of how they deal with these villains. And they also need to ensure that with these villains, there is no personal connection, in my opinion, just for the sake of gameplay and enjoyment. We just want to go out there and we just want to kick bad guy butt. And I think that's something that needs to be highlighted in this next Spider-Man game. So I wanted to go ahead and basically highlight this very briefly in this video. Now, I also understand that, you know, some people may have a different opinion and I want to hear those in the comment section. Do you think that, you know, the Spider-Man game needs to highlight, uh, you know, an ex the new Spider-Man game anyways, the, the Spider-Man 2 game coming out in 2023? Do you think it needs to highlight much more heavily the external conflict or do you think it needs to create a balance of both of them? I strongly believe that the previous games have already established the internal conflict and it's time now for the superhero to basically get out there and just start to do their thing. But anyways, I'll go ahead and just stop the video here. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching the video. I appreciate you guys a lot. Hopefully we'll talk soon. Peace out.